Yes people, welcome back to another video. If you're new here, I'm Liam from Good Bloke Outdoors and in today's episode, I'm gonna be giving you 10 tips for wild camping and hiking in 2023. So tip number one is to make a checklist for your gear. So when I first started off, I just used to make a big list of all my gear in notes on my iPhone and then I'd separate it into categories. So I'd have like my shelter, my sleep system, my cook kit, etc., and then I'd list each individual item down so that I knew I wouldn't forget out next time I were going camping. What I do now is I've downloaded an app called Packlight, and I do recommend this app, it's pretty decent. So you list every single item that you own. You can weigh them all as well. So obviously if you're all about shaving them extra grams, then this might come in handy to you. I'm not overly fussed about that right now. But what you can do is, same again, you can separate it into categories. So you'll start off by listing every single item you own and then you can build a pack on the app. So you can say, right, this is my winter setup. And then you can click different items from all the gear that you've listed to build your ideal full winter setup. And then you can do the same again for more of a, say, a multi-day hiking. So then you've got those lists there with all the individual items laid out. And then when you're about to go on a backpacking wild camping trip, you can check that list out, tick it all off. That way you're not gonna forget out. Tip number two is to download your route for offline use. So for finding my routes, I use various different apps. So from Google Maps to try find like car parking spots or to check the street view to see if anyone's taken any 360 photos of a certain area. I like to use an app called Footpath. And what you can do on that is plot your full route and then you can download it to your phone and it works when there's no signal. So let's be honest, if you're up in the mountains in the Lake District, or out in the Peak District, there's times when you're not gonna have any signal at all. So you do not wanna be relying on a navigation system that requires signal. So download your routes offline. You can still see where you are as your location, even if there's no internet, and then you can follow your route safely. So like I said, the app that I use is Footpath. You can get a free version and it still does work, but you have limited amount of routes that you can download or save at once. Tip number three is to peg one guy line out or clip it to your rucksack using a carabiner. So the last thing you want to be doing is chasing your brand new tent down the side of a mountain because you've let it blow away. As soon as you take your tent out of its bag, it's got the opportunity to turn into a kite right there and then. So the best thing to do is attach a carabiner to the outside of your rucksack. And the second you start pulling your tent out of its bag, clip one of the guy lines straight onto that carabiner. So then at least you can assess the situation then, you can move the tent about and no matter what, say if you let go or a massive gust of wind came and blew it out your hands, at least you know it's gonna be securely tied onto your backpack or your rucksack. Or another option is to leave one of your guy lines slightly out of the tent bag. And as soon as you go to pitch, just get that one guy line pegged straight out, nice and secure. Tip number four is to make a washing line in your tent. So this is a good little tip really. And one of the first things I do when I get a new tent is to check out the options when it comes to making a washing line inside. When you've done a long day's hiking and you've had bits of rain or even just sweaty clothes, you don't really wanna leave them sat there soaking or screwed up. Most tents come with little tabs across the top of the tent, say where you'd hook a lantern or whatever. So you wanna hook up a nice little washing line using a bit of paracord or a bit of bungee. And then what you can do then is hang your wet clothes or your damp clothes over the top and they're more likely to dry out throughout the night. I don't know why tents don't come with that as standard anyway, because most people do that mod. Tip number five is to use a waterproof jacket or coat over your sleeping bag foot box. So the last thing you want is to get your down sleeping bag damp. And this happens a lot towards the foot box end where your feet are sort of brushing the edge of the tent. And especially in winter conditions, you're gonna be getting a bit of condensation unless you've got your tent really well ventilated. So a good top tip to do, to be honest, I don't do this tip anymore because I bought a bivy bag and I just use the bivy bag over the top of the sleeping bag. If you don't have a bivy bag or you forget your bivy bag, good top tip is to use your waterproof jacket or coat and put the foot box of your sleeping bag inside it. That way you won't get any moisture from the side of the tent on the bottom of your sleeping bag. Tip number six is to use spare clothes in a dry bag as a pillow. So a lot of people when they're wild camping, they'll take some spare clothes with them. So what you can do is, say if you change from your hiking clothes into your warm gear, so your down jackets, your down pants or whatnot, then you can use your hiking clothes, fluff them up, put them in a dry bag, and you can use that as an emergency pillow, say if you forget yours, or you might have spare clothes for the following day. Same again, whack them in a dry bag. You can blow a bit of air into the dry bag as well, roll it up a bit, close it, and you can use that as a nice little pillow a good backup or if you're all about weight saving and you don't want to bring a hundred gram pillow 
there's an option for you. Tip number seven is to take a pee bottle. So I don't think I need to go into too much detail about this one. Basically, if it's absolutely pissing it down outside, wind's coming in, blowing a gale, and you need a leak, the last thing you would have to do is to get out and go for a pee. So take a pee bottle. I recommend a Lucas Aid bottle. Tip number eight, hand warmers in your sleeping bag. So another one that's pretty straightforward. Get some hand warmers. These are by Hot Hands. And say an hour before you're about to go to sleep, bung a few in your sleeping bag on it if it's a really cold night. And these are supposed to stay warm for up to 10 hours of heat. I think you can get some that even last longer than that. So what these will do is just build a nice bit of heat up inside your sleeping bag so that when you get inside it, it's already warm. Tip number nine is to bring spare bags, bin liners and dry bags. So another simple tip really, and it doesn't cost a lot, is to bring a couple bin liners or carrier bag. I always bring a dry bag as well, a spare one, because if I've managed to get any clothes wet or damp, then I like to keep them separate, obviously, from the rest of the stuff in my backpack. And as far as bin liners are concerned, a good tip that you can do is, if you don't have a backpack cover, you can put it inside it when you're storing it in the vestibule throughout the night. It just stops your backpack from getting damp. Why am I saying backpack? I always say rucksack. Backpack, rucksack, backpack, rucksack. I don't know. So you bang your rucksack inside the bin liner, and then it stops it getting damp throughout the night. And obviously, you're going to need a carrier bag or a bin liner as a rubbish. So that brings me on to my final tip. And tip number 10, quite simple really, leave no trace. Thank you for watching, like, comment, subscribe in a bit.